As a former competitor, I know how important it is to be stress-free and showcase your best package from your physique to the final touches. Maximum Beauty is here for all your competition glam needs, hair and makeup to the last minute touch-ups before the stage. Can you hear me, Sarah? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. What's up? Not much. How are you? I've got my cup of joe, too. Yeah. Good. I needed it. Today's been a day. Yeah. Tell me about it. So yeah. you like sold a house and moved? <laughs> no, I, uh, well... I was living in Arizona and then um, life was really good to me and I moved to Tennessee because life was so good to me. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, it was kind of like a last, I, I don't want to say last minute decision because it wasn't last minute because there was no time frame on it, but it was a very quick decision and awesome. I mean, just the best thing for me. So I left my apartment, um, which all worked out really well for me. So I left my apartment in Arizona. I had um, some modeling in Denver, Colorado, went, drove to Denver with as much as I could in my car, shipped like six large FedEx boxes, sold all my shit on Marketplace within literally three days. Wow. Thanks to um, Mel, who's like one of my best friends and one of my makeup artists for Maximum Beauty. Um, she was with me. Mel. What? I think I met Mel. <laughs> yes, 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 you did. You did. And uh, we sold everything on Marketplace literally within three days. It was incredible. So I highly recommend Facebook Marketplace to everybody. Um, and then, yeah, I drove to Denver. And um, from there, my boyfriend, uh, Wes, he came and met me out in Denver. And then we drove the rest of the way back to Tennessee. So Wes lives in Tennessee. Wes lives in Tennessee, yeah. Yep. <laughs> It wasn't for the Tennessee whiskey. <laughs> uh, a little bit, you know. I like some Jack Daniels. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it, it <clears throat> my mom lives here as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have family here. <clears throat> oh my God, I'm fucking dying. <clears throat> COVID, you know. Totally oh, kidding. You got Rona. <laughs> totally kidding. Totally kidding. Mm. Wow. Well, that's a lot of changes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's awesome. And you yeah, look gorgeous. So maybe that's part of it too. You just, you're in a great place. You're like happy, glowy. Yeah. I'm in a really great place. Yeah. I'm in a really great place and uh, it's awesome because, um, I already, do or I'm sorry Maximum Beauty does a lot out here with NPC Tennessee so it's nice to be even kind of closer to the area that we do a lot in um super helpful so I'm excited to be more active here in bodybuilding that's so cool Sarah yeah thank you yeah. what's up with you uh not much we're uh, honestly it's the same thing like if you were to ask me like seven months ago where I was at, I'm literally the same, we're in the same place. Pause and insert like our March quarantine Let's episode. Let's do a proper Use episode. virtual background. Oh. <laughs> I could be in San Francisco with you. That's right. Okay. So how do we choose virtual, virtual background? What's up? I'm in San Francisco. <laughs> Seriously. Exactly. Insert the one that we were a little drunk at. Yeah, I, I think I might need to pour a glass of wine for this. Oh my god, my freaking eyelash. Sorry. Um, but California is just we're uh we're getting it's just been really hard out here. So I but I did hear some promising news that I guess the ICU 
uh, like we've, all of our ICUs have been like pretty much saturated, but I think that's getting lifted, which still means that we're like closed for most things indoors, but uh, either I paused or you paused. Are you there? Is it mine or yours? You didn't pause for me, so. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Then you... Oh my God. But my mom is calling me. That's okay. Mom. Yes. I'm recording right now. Can I call you later? Absolutely. Okay. Uh... Bye. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, well, so the numbers are, so the ICU numbers are better. The ICU, I, the ICU numbers I think are getting better. Um, so I think there's, we're looking at potential light at the end of the tunnel soon, which would be great, but it's just been like, you know, now we're operating outdoors and we're getting hit with this like crazy storm. So it's just one thing after another, but I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. It's just blah boring thing. I'm sorry. It's all right. We're going to get, we're, we're, we're doing, I mean, we're, you know, it's crazy how I like, this is just, we, we're just used to it. Like we're just used to it. We're making things work. We're, everyone's being very creative on finding ways to like make things happen. So, you know, we're getting, we're getting through it and things are okay, but that's, that's, that's our update. Not much, not a whole lot. <laughs> not a whole lot, but people are, you know, going to want to know and going to yeah. ask. So. Yeah, There's the you. update from Camille in California. Uh, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that door because I hate it when I realize that there's a toilet in my screen with you. Mm, I feel that. Okay. Okay. Well, it feels like it's been a minute since we did this, even though it was only a few weeks ago. But I think it's been a year, actually. I know. <laughs> can you think about I'm sorry we just have to pause and say this that last year Monday January 25th of 2020 you were leaving my area I was leaving your area we had just finished the amazing seminar yeah and I just it was just happening I remember that, that night and I told Chris I'm like holy crap this would have been the weekend that we had our like our event we've done it the last three years in a row is kind of weird but sad not on our, our radar to do it this year or even try to attempt it but right. in the future, um yeah yeah i know that i realized that last night also it was kind of surreal so um but yeah last time we were on the show uh it was we did our olympia recap which was a lot of fun i think people got some good information out of that <clears throat> um and uh, I think it's a perfect time to talk about dieting and different styles, um, off season versus on season. I think there's a lot of people right now where, you know, could use a little bit of structure and we can talk about um, different approaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And two, with uh, with everything with the diet, you know, it, it seems as if we really want to talk about this with everyone because we it, it feels to me at least that everywhere is going back into some kind of quarantine. That there are areas that it is letting up, and then there are areas where it's just going back. And and we obviously know that the vaccine is going out and uh, people are getting it, but it's going to be a longer process than anticipated, I think, for everyone. On that note, um, we are middle of January. Season for the bikini world is gonna start ramping up here in the next, I, I was just looking at the schedule actually this week. Um, and I think the first bik pro bikini show, correct me if I'm wrong, is it end of February or is it April? All right, that's like a, okay. Welcome to the Bikini Show. What's I up, everyone? <laughs> Sarah Lyon here with Camille Perriott. We are your professionals. We are Hang your on. professionals. Let's just do a quick research on everything we're going to be talking about. Yeah, you just you just stay right there, everybody. <laughs> um.
you know, the schedule isn't posted how it used to be posted. Well, the thing is, there's, there's some shows that are canceled and there's some that are like, I think there's some to be announced, announced but um, okay, maybe I'm just thinking of The Clash. The Clash is in April. The Clash is, yep, the Clash is the first one. And I am thrilled to say that with The Clash, I will be there. So I'm Woo. super excited uh, to be a part of the clash and to be there to interview the ladies and whoever is crowned the new 2021 champion following uh, in Ashley Kaltwasser's steps. Curious if Ashley is going to be back there to defend her title, if that's too soon, who knows? I but yeah, I'm super excited. It's going to, it's like 10 weeks away right now. Crazy. Yeah. And Joe puts on a great show. Anyone who has not competed at a border clash, uh, Joe is the promoter of that and he uh, takes very, very good care of the athletes. It's a lot of fun. I think this year it's actually going to be in Florida, right? It is. It's in Orlando, Florida at the Hyatt Regency. It's actually the same place that the Olympia was at. So if anyone was there. Well, a staple uh, venue in all of our futures. Yeah. <laughs> Better get your uh, tickets to Orlando while they're on sale with Southwest yeah. and all the other <laughs> airlines. Yeah, no joke. But yeah, it, Joe puts on such a phenomenal show. And I mean, it's the most prize money for bikini, uh, you know, of course, besides topping the the Olympia. So yeah, super exciting. Which the Olympia is uh, to be announced. Arnold's classic is postponed till September so you know that the Olympia's got to be probably definitely not the same month as Arnold that'd be crazy that would be great so the Arnold uh was officially released then what's that was the Arnold dates officially released um I don't know if the exact date has been released but I thought they just they just claimed the month of September I believe okay okay because I heard June September I heard a little banter yeah, I think I, I saw it on Generation Iron. That I would see that too. I did yeah, see that too. So yeah. we'll see. Um, to start with dieting, um, I was really excited when you said you wanted to talk about this because literally this morning, um, one of my you know one of my notifications in Pinterest was like top searches is you know aesthetic workouts and fitness dieting. Um, and I was like, you know, that is such a great thing to talk about people. A lot of, I have been very, um, absent on my social media platforms and I haven't been like really engaging and I've been wanting to, people have been asking me like, can you share like how you, you know, deal with a, a cheat meal or how you, you know, how you, whatever approaches I might be following. Um, you know, a lot of people have been asking, I've been pushing it off, pushing it off. And then I saw these alerts for top searches, like, wow, okay, this is a perfect time to talk about it. Cause it's, you know, a lot of people are needing help and direction. Um, and when you brought it up to my attention this morning, I was just like, yes, let's do this. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. So how do you want to kick it off? Well, okay. This is where, this is, I think the most, uh, important thing that, and I think anyone who's following our show is uh, they follow the fitness industry, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they fall, they have a lot of athletes that they follow and they're probably pretty informed on a lot of different dieting approaches. They're probably, most people who are watching us are probably competitors. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're familiar with dieting approaches, but I think the most um, puzzling part about dieting, whether you're in your off season or you're in your prep is uh, understanding what your your own individual's body's needs are, how to how to find that, and then how to calculate that either deficit or surplus based on your goal. So one thing that I've been using, and this is not an advertisement at all, but um, <laughs> there's a there's a device called a Whoop. Have you heard of the Whoop? No, I haven't. It's what is amazing. That? So a Whoop is. Um, it's just a strap. So this is, if there's like a sensor, it's kind of like your Apple watch. There's a sensor underneath it, mm -hmm. but there's no face on it. But the data that it provides to you is crazy. Like it blows an Apple watch pull way out of the water. It blows a Fitbit out of the water. It gives you so much detailed information and it's really geared for people who are 
who are athletes, who are very much into like their own body's, you know, feedback. So it gives you uh, a continuous, it, it continuously checks your heart rate, whereas a lot of the other devices doesn't do a continuous heart rate check. You have to, like for your Apple Watch, you could, if you want to find out how many calories you actually burn during the day, which is, I think is the most fundamental, the most important part to anyone who's trying to figure out what kind of diet they should go on to reach their goal of weight loss, muscle growth. You need to know how many calories you burn per day. Mm -hmm. um, the so Apple Watches, if you, you, it will give you a really clear reading if you program a certain activity. So then it will continuously check your heart rate. But during the day, it kind of just does averages. And so the daily burn might be quite a bit off, whereas the Whoop gives you a really, really clear indication. And you learn so much about your body. For an example, um, I've been using this. I started using this at the beginning of my Olympia prep. Um, and you just learn all you, you start to, the more, the longer you wear it, it learns your body very, very, uh, accurately. And I've learned for an example, when you, okay, any woman who's watching this, which is probably most people, when we are about to start our period, we, we experience cravings and, you know, you're, you feel hungrier. Um, and I've always wondered, like, you know, I wonder if I actually burn more calories when I'm like in that process. Right. And I've learned over my past couple of cycles that like the week leading into my period, for an example, I'm burning actually like 500 calories more per day than I normally am during the every other day of the month. Hmm. Um, and then it starts to kind of slow down. But I was actually really surprised overall how I always kind of thought my calorie burn was a lot higher mm -hmm. on average than it than it is. And it just, it gives you a lot of great information. So then you can take that and then you can like understand like, okay, I can, like, if I'm, if I want to lose weight, like I need to create this kind of deficit, but having that baseline, I think is really important. So that's one cool tool that I've been using that I've really been enjoying for, and it's allowed me since I, so I stopped my Olympia prep when I decided I was not going to be competing three weeks before I was pretty much at my stage weight. And can Camille, and, and Camille, I totally, I stopped. I totally, I'm sorry, I'm totally going to interrupt you. I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to interrupt you because I know that people are going to have the same like moment because we did kind of touch on this with our recap, but can you just maybe touch on again really quick, like what made you decide to pull out of the Olympia and all in all how that decision was made for you? And I mean... I'm sure a lot of people too are curious of how you felt watching the Olympia and, and how you feel now. So we're going to get a little sidetracked, but I, I really want to address that. Okay. Thank you. And honestly, I have not actually even talked about it. And I think we were going to talk about it and we just never got around to it. So yeah. So I definitely want, yeah. Okay. So I decided to pull out of the Olympia. Um, and that was, I actually, it was, uh, a, a very long and hard discussion that I had with my husband, Chris. Um, I was like gung ho. I was like completely on point. I was focused and it was three weeks. It was like the week before it was actually like three days before Thanksgiving. And, um, Chris has a, Chris has a, okay. Backtrack. Chris has a history of, uh, of cancer and he, he's, he continues to struggle with it. You know, we have it under control, but it's something that we, we are constantly having to, check up on and monitor and he's also in his mid to late 40s um and numbers for covid were starting to really increase and he was just like you know i i i i'm honestly really i've never felt this way yet but i i am just not comfortable flying to florida for the olympia and um he's like you know we'll see if things get better but he's just like i you know, I, I really don't feel comfortable. And what st triggered that conversation was like, okay, I'm three weeks out. Cause Chris does my coaching also. And I'm like, I'm three weeks out. We need to start, you know, getting a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, I need to start cutting a little bit harder. And he was just like, I, he's like, we're not going to be depleting you super hard. Like, I don't want you to be flying there and have your immune system completely compromised, get sick. He was just like, you know, I like it, it's, you need, we need to look at health. And then, so then he started bringing up his other concerns and 
I mean, I couldn't even argue with that. Like I can't, if my, if my husband's telling me that he doesn't feel comfortable for legit reasons like that, um, I couldn't argue with it. So it was a hard decision. I pretty much went to bed in the fetal position that night and was just like kind of really bummed. Um, but the next morning I woke up and it was just like, you know, it, it is what it is. Family, family comes first and the health of those around me matters more. So we made that decision to, to withdraw. And honestly, I didn't have any, any regrets afterwards about it. Even watching it live was totally fine. And I was, it was kind of weird not being there, but I, I didn't feel like, uh, I, I, I was actually really surprised. I didn't have really strong cluster stuff. I didn't have strong feelings of, He's of crying for you. I know. <laughs> um, so it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I still am happy with the decision I made. And, you know, it's. And now I know before, I, I don't remember exactly what episode it was, but on one of our previous episodes that we had on season two, you had mentioned that you know, you guys had decided, or you had decided that this, the Olympia was it. This was the end of the, your career, um, kind of going off on a high note, if you will. Does yeah. pulling out of the Olympia this year, does that change that? Are we going to see you on stage now in 2021? Are you going to give it a go at, for this coming Olympia? How, what do you? No, I'm, that was going to be no. my last. <laughs> no. Um, that was going to be my last show, and I was really, really looking forward to and And we've made that decision for the past year. We knew, actually, before 2019 Olympia, um, that was going to be my last one. And then I ended up qualifying for the 2020 Olympia, so I was like, okay, I got another year, year in the tank. Um, but um, I'm done, um, and, and it, I always knew that that time would come when I felt comfortable with it. There was a time up until the past year where I was just like, like the thought of ending my career or stopping competing was like scary to me. Cause I, I, I enjoyed it so much, every aspect of it. But, um, you know, I, I just feel like it's the time is right. I feel like the time is right. And I want to leave that I'm, I'm really proud and happy with. Um, and so you won't be seeing me back on stage, although never say never. Um, but I, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be still involved. I would actually want to start getting involved in other aspects of the sport, um, including yourself, but not on stage competing. Yes, yeah, totally, totally. Well, thank you for sharing. I'm yeah. sad that I won't see you on stage again. So what, what was your last show then? It was just the Olympia then of 2019. Arnold's. Arnold, 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 right, of course, 2020. Yeah, yeah. The whole year, the whole year was like a time warp. <laughs> Seriously. That's why I'm like, wait, it's January 25th, like, this and was the, the right Arnold. when COVID started. Huh? I know, thank God the Arnold's happened, because there was like, we were like days away from the Arnold's even getting canceled on us. Oh, so. yeah, that no, that no audience, yeah. Yeah, I know. Bizarre. So that that was uh that was my the reasoning and you know I, I, it was I I spoke to Sandy about it I spoke to J M about it um and they they all were really kind and understanding about you know the reasoning and stuff and but, yeah absolutely is, yeah well that hopefully answers all your guys's questions on that. And our little side story, we can go back now to <laughs> how you were talking about uh, the the band awesome. and how you were, yeah, and <laughs> how you've been utilizing it since pulling from the Olympia. Yeah, so since so since I pulled from Olympia, um, what I'm trying to say is that having this tool and having a really clear understanding of like what Camille burns on a daily basis and how it changes pretty often each day, depending upon the type of activity I'm doing. Um, I've been able to maintain my weight that I left my prep at, which is 120. That's when I stopped. I compete at 119. Now, it might be my body composition slightly different, but um, what, I'm, what I've been doing, which has been working out really, really well, is I see my caloric burn, 
on my average now and I can see what I'm doing each day. And I have programmed, you know, my map. I, I haven't in the past utilized my fitness pal as much as I do now, mm-hmm. but I think it's a great tool for someone who is like in their off season or wanting to just, you know, that accountability. And so I've created a little bit of a deficit so I can maintain that. And I can, I still eat whatever I want to. I still pretty much keep it clean, but I'm following within that range. I have, you know, two tools I'm using and it's working awesome. And yeah. I've been really, really happy with that. But if now knowing what I know now, like when I was very active in coaching and, and even active as, a, as an athlete, like I really wish I had that tool in my tool belt to use so I can really understand where, you know, where I'm at. So it's, it's, I strongly look at, I strongly recommend it. Check it out. It's incredible. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, we'll be contacting them for their sponsorship after. <laughs> I was just going to say, Whoop should sponsor this episode. <laughs> so Whoop, uh, that was a full description. She really pitched it there. I'm about to order one. <laughs> I, I feel blown away by it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, awesome. And I totally agree with you. And I think that everyone is kind of coming from a different spot. So I'm sure that there are a lot of people that are coming, you know, off of contest prep. We just had that run of national shows there at the end. You know, we went right from universe to nationals to uh, USAs to masters USAs. I can't even remember all of them. The Olympia amateur, those were all within like six weeks. So there's so many athletes. Yeah. That are like, I'm probably still reversing or some, you know, if you will, at one, at some point or another, um, getting their calories back up. Right. And then I would say that, you know, on my half, I can kind of speak more on the other side of things of not being a competitor, possibly, you know, just not being in, in a state of reversing, perhaps, you know, you're coming yeah. off of the holiday, right, just lifestyle, you're coming from the holidays, and maybe you want to tighten up some things or, you know, change your habits of what's going on right now with you know, still being underneath a lockdown situation. And I would say with me, the biggest thing that I would recommend with just your normal um, calorie burn and paying attention to the little things that you're, that you're utilizing. So I'm sorry, not calorie burn, calorie intake, but paying attention to those, the condiments that you're using, paying attention to how much salt you're putting on your food. Those little things, I think get so kind of swept underneath the rug. And so many people look more at like the big picture counting certain macros that they don't even realize what they're adding to their food. You know, so my favorite, my favorite is when uh, someone cooks, with olive oil and they're like oh well I'm just cooking with oil I'm like well, right yeah like <laughs> right like it's nothing like it's just that that has no calories that's not adding fat to your diet and it absolutely is so uh keeping those things in mind actually looking at the labels and reading the labels I think there's a lot of people that still have a hard time reading labels that don't even read labels because they don't know what they're looking at and I think that's something that you know if you don't and even if maybe you have been you know doing a program or diet or anything like it's okay to kind of stop and like go back and look at the fundamental basics of everything because it's kind of like what we're talking about at the end of the day it's still input versus output you know no matter what so you have to keep that into consideration um and then too like you said finding out what works best for you it might not be a popular thing but there are a lot of people or i have run into quite a few clients that have digestive issues And my way of addressing those digestive issues has changed throughout the years versus throwing digestive enzymes at it, throwing different supplements at it, if you will. I really like to take a step back and look at what's your blood type? You know, what are you supposed to be eating? Like, you know, does, are certain foods known to inflame your blood type? And if so, let's eliminate those. Let's focus on more of the foods that are a little bit better for you right now. And then slowly add in those other ones to see which causes that flare up, you know, getting to know your body. It, it, it's so key. Absolutely. So the, the, that's a, such a great point that you brought up in a, in a blood type diet. Um, you first of all, a lot of people don't know what their blood type is. Um, but you can find there's actually, you can actually get a home kit. You can order a home kit and find out what your blood type is. Amazon. And, 
<laughs> yeah, Amazon. And then you can send it in, you get your results back. If your doctor does not have a history of what your blood type is, but you're absolutely right, Sarah. There are so many people with uh, sensitivities and these sensitivities aren't like what people normally would think like, ah, you know, broccoli makes my stomach upset or gassy. It's, it can come down to the type of meat you're eating, or maybe somebody will do better with a more plant-based diet. And making those changes can reduce inflammation, can can be the also the barrier to someone who is completely plateaued in weight loss. Um, mm -hmm. Chris coached a lot of people on a blood type diet, and the results were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So that's a really really good point. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, and I've utilized it for different different situations, different scenarios with different clients, and and it does it it really seems to help. So you know analyzing where you're at and what your body is doing. And, you know, it's, it's easy to get frustrated um, and to just stay consistent. I feel like that's something too. So many people struggle with consistency and, and everyone struggles with different things, but at the end of the day, I think consistency just comes down to discipline. So focusing perhaps on more disciplinary actions, forming habits, maintaining those habits, that will allow you greater success long term with your diet and and looking and feeling how you want. You know, you walk around like this because you're consistent. You know, um, I'm consistent with how I eat. You know, I. It's just it takes time. It takes time, and I think that's something too that we both can definitely harp on. That it's not that this happened overnight for either of us. And we have completely different body types too. So I like that we're having this conversation. But to piggyback off of your consistency, which is, which is key, um, is also identifying if there are certain triggers or maybe emotional eating behaviors that some people have. I know it's very common, especially in the time that we're in right now, there's a lot of stress factors, whether it's you know uh, income or politics mm -hmm. or... Uh, whatever the reasoning is, uh, school, being a parent, you know, there's a lot of stress factors. And so learning coping mechanisms have also, is also very important to the way we uh, respond to stress. Some people turn to, because it feel really better. Um, some will turn to, you know, alcohol, you know, identifying certain triggers that will, you know, ahead of time. So you don't turn to, uh, something like food, you know, to, right. that, that temporary feel good reaction when in the long term you're, you know, that's very short lived and you're going to feel worse afterwards and it's breaking those habits and cycles. And that can take a long time to learn too. Yeah, it does. It does. Cause it is, it's forming a habit. And I think that it, it's something that, uh, you know, it's not really harped on enough in that sense of just really holding yourself accountable. You know, you can hire a coach, you can have someone to hold, hold you accountable, but at the end of the day, you know, what you do is what you do. So you, you have to be realistic and honest with yourself of where you can improve and what you can improve on and yeah. making those choices. Sometimes switching it out, if you know that you do turn to X, Y, and Z with that, you know, switch it out. Instead, go on a walk during that time, you know? don't, don't, don't go out with your friends that night, you know, find a different activity to do, whatever. I don't really have anywhere to go. <laughs> but I literally like forget that because I just don't really do much in that sense. So I'll yourself telling, telling friends, it's like, if you ever want to get like meet up and go out for a drink or something? And I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. It doesn't even sound right anymore. Um, so those are all really great things to do for someone who's trying to maintain. I think a lot of people, okay, I, I have a good one. Um, try to think about two or three food items that you love that are maybe like a healthy alternative. Um, we are so lucky to live in an age right now where there are so many healthy options to foods that we like to have. So Sarah, what are like, if you, can you think of like, maybe at the most two, like two or three food items that you love having that is kind of like guilt-free that you have as a staple? Um, it's new for me, but I would like to definitely say that it's a game changer because it's, it's filling. And this is, again, this is more of like 
a normal, healthy lifestyle diet. Um, I love like midday. I always have uh, a cucumber sandwich, which sounds kind of lame, but it's very tasty on two pieces of toasted whole wheat bread. Um, and there's a awesome brand here out in Tennessee and I'm blanking on the name, but I can look it up and put it on here. Um, but it's a really good bread. Uh, and it's kind of like Ezekiel bread, but not as grainy. Sometimes people say that Ezekiel bread's super dry. I don't get the whole like freezer thing, keeping it in the freezer and then utilizing it. So this you can keep out in the pantry, whatever, but it's same kind of concept, same kind of texture. And then the cucumbers have already soaked and marinated in like a light Italian dressing like a uh, little sea salt and then there you know I just put the little cucumbers on the bread put it together cut it into four squares and uh yeah I eat that and I have to say that um yeah definitely got turned on to that by my boyfriend had no idea about a cucumber sandwich and he made one for me and I was like whoa <laughs> that's the best texture combo ever so I really like that because cucumbers are just such a guilt-free I mean if Clients can eat as many uh, cucumbers as they want. Um, you know, they're like 70% water. So I really like that. That's super guilt-free for me. That's one of like my go-tos. Um, another go-to, of course, is my protein ice cream. <laughs> That's such a good one. That's great. So why don't you, what, you and, and uh, those who are maybe not familiar with what Sarah's talking about, you've actually done a video yeah right yeah I'll link it here it's obviously on this channel but yeah I'll link it here so you guys can check out that recipe and I did that I realized too that I've only done that for the vanilla protein ice cream I think I did vanilla on purpose I need to actually do it for like the OG chocolate and when I say OG I mean I can't take credit for this recipe Courtney King this is her recipe and I perfected it when we lived together over the summer so <laughs> It's all, it's, about the, it's all about the right ice ratio and certain proteins are creamier than others. Certain yeah. proteins are kind of like a little bit waterier when you add, yeah. you know, your, all your ingredients together and it's not the same. Yeah. I use a bone broth protein powder. Actually. It's really good. Well, it's not, I'm well, yeah, yeah. It's bone broth. What's the name? What? You like? What's the name of the company that makes bone broth? protein oh um ancient nutrition you can get it at like sprouts whole foods they have it at a lot of those stores i've actually never seen it in a supplement store per se i just see it in like the very health conscious stores my sister uses that one so whenever i go to her house i have her banana nut bone broth protein Ooh, that yeah. would be a good protein ice cream the last one I had at her house i think it was really old because it literally tasted like dirt but before that Ooh. i remember it tasted a lot better Oh, okay. So if you're watching this, yes, you need to change out your bone protein. <laughs> Pay attention to expiration dates. <laughs> okay, so my favorite foods right yes, now. Yes, 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 Camille. Yeah, I'm supposed to ask you now. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you ever heard of the brand Lilies? Yeah. Oh my God, they're dark chocolate bars that have no sugar added. So Lilies, uh, if you guys don't know what Lilies is, it's a chocolate that is sweetened with stevia, and uh, they're pretty low in calories too. The bars are some of the, I I go for the chocolate chips because it's like it seems like a little lower. But they, um, at Whole Foods right now, they have a, they, they carry the new flavor chocolate chips of white Sorry, chocolate. we have an injured cat and she was oh, making no. noise. I'm listening. You want to go get her? She's coming to me. Hi, baby. Come here. Aww. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Go on. All my cats around me too. But, uh, so the Lily's white chocolate chips and the Lily's, uh, Sea salt caramel chocolate chips are yes. flipping amazing. So I'll do like a little medley. I think it's like 50 calories and the serving and it's so good. So that's my dessert. I love it. Um, I do like the sweet smarts, the Swedish fish a lot too. So like that's mm. one of my go-tos as well. It's like a, there's only two grams of sugar in that. Um, but the other part- Not actual is, Swedish fish. No, it's a sweet. Just smart. to clarify. Yeah, so it's a, it's a they it's um, 
I get it at Whole Foods again, but this, the sweet smarts they make, it's all uh, natural. It's crazy how they do it. And there's no artificial sweeteners. There's no artificial mm. flavors. There's no artificial anything. It's mm. crazy. There's only two grams of sugar and they're really good. And they, That's um, the best. That's something that I, I think that is also something that is important when listening to your body and noticing like if you're, hey, I notice I'm really bloated when I have this, you know, something like that. It's really great to pay attention to the ingredients in the food that you're eating. I have become much more, for lack of a better term, OCD about what is actually in the food that I'm eating um, because I have noticed so much that affects me and not only affects me digestively, but also my skin. You know, we truly are what we eat and what we put in our body that our cells reproduce based off of the nutrients we have. So um, that is something that I would much rather have, you know, real natural ingredients that I know and have that extra, you know, three grams of sugar, if you will, or two grams of fat um, than something fake. Like Walden Farms is like totally out for me. Like that is so disgusting. That is straight chemicals. And I truly believe that, you know, going a little farther off topic, because I love to do that, um, <laughs> that a lot of um, America, a lot of Americans problems and why America is such a quickly, rapidly growing with cancer and all other kinds of diseases. I think that a hundred percent has to do with what ingredients are in our food and what we're ingesting because many other, almost every other country has stricter food laws than we do. And it's kind of disturbing. Yeah. I, Very I, disturbing. Completely agree. I completely agree. We are I think you could probably get way more diet options here than most other countries, yet we have the highest rate of obesity. So, right. Yeah. And I think it's just because so many of those other countries just eat real natural foods. You know, a lot of them go to the market on an every other day basis. But, you know, America, capitalistic country, we, you know, are always on the go. We don't have time. Right. You know. Wow, right. we just went all the way off the deep end. Okay, we'll really oh, back out. Absolutely true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> if you've traveled to other countries, you're like, wow, like this is really nice. So they actually take time with for each other, you know. Um, but uh, sure. my last item I was going to mention, which is really good if you're a pasta lover, um, have you ever tried edamame pasta? No. It's a thing. That's a thing. It sounds really weird, but it's really good. Again, you can get, I find it. I love edamame. Love. Okay, so they they make an edamame noodle. I'm gonna get it to show you. Okay, great. Um, I have it. That would be great if she doesn't. I have it. Okay, so listen to the macros on this, Sarah. So this is their um, organic edamame fettuccine. You boil it quickly, so it only takes like three minutes to boil. Um, and it is so good. Um, but listen to the macros. In a, uh, two ounces cooked, which is actually like a lot. This makes a lot. And one serving is this huge pile of pasta. Um, three, it's 200 calories, three grams of fat, 21, 21 grams of, uh, carbohydrates, but there's 12 grams of fiber and 24 grams of protein. You don't What's even need sugar. The sugar is three grams. But the crazy thing is that if you, so if you subtract the fiber, 12 grams from the 21 grams of carbohydrates, uh -huh. like what, uh, Oh my God, my mouth's kind of sucky right now, but like what, nine grams of net carbs and yeah, that's 20, 24 grams of protein. That's like, you don't even need to add protein to your pasta. No, so, that's great. This is an awesome where'd thing. You, to add where'd you get, where do you get that? Whole foods. You can probably find it at okay. Sprout or something like that as well. But okay. uh, those are my favorite things that, and the whole family likes, well, Lola, Lola doesn't care for it, but Chris does. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's okay. She's allowed to, right? You know, well, it, I mean, it's, it's great. So those are, those are my items. Okay. I like that. So another you're... item I just remembered. Yes. Salty and crunchy. They're really good. They have different flavors. Chickpeas. That's all. Oh yes. I'm all about those. Mm, especially especially I do a lot of like little road trips I gotta stop at gas stations here and there chickpeas are great and I my like bad thing that I like from uh gas stations that is bad but also kind of gives you a little something are like the little lunchables that without the cookie that come you can get not like you have the Lunchable brand, but then you have the also the other brands of them, you know. But those are always really nice with the, like, cheese, cracker, like, little deli meat kind of a thing. Because you're getting a little protein, you know. It's uh, another lifestyle. <laughs> uh, you, you could go for a road trip with us and sit next to Lola and share her Lunchable. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have admitted to this Lunchable thing, and now I just realized I did it on this show. But... <laughs> And everyone comes back, especially because, you know, I do have older friends that have children. They're like, oh, just like my daughter. Oh, just like my son. I'm like, yeah, you know. Yeah, cheese and crackers, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, it's, it, in moderation, that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. It, it's in moderation and my activity level always stays pretty high too. So that's how you can get away with those things. So that's, that's the other thing. Um, is activity levels and staying active and um you know i think there's diet is well there's a there's a there's a few very important fundamentals you cannot out train a poor diet so keeping that diet consistent and you know within a range that your body is able to burn so you're not in a surplus if you're trying to lose weight um where was I going? Chris walked in. I don't know. I, I got distracted with Chris, too. I was going to say, Chris, please come say hello. Hi, girls. How's it going? Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we oh, need another dancing level. segment, please. I came in. I'm going to make it rain. Baby. <laughs> you always have something. God, that's hilarious. Can you get the dog off of me? Um, but we were talking about activity levels. So, so step oh yeah, back, realizing that you not train a poor diet, um, but being active every day. You know, keeping your diet consistent and staying active. And even if you aren't, you know, again, lifestyle, better lifestyle. <laughs> um, even if you aren't, yeah, for sure, both, but. Still, um, even if you aren't able to make it to the gym one day, even just getting up and going on a walk in the morning, you know, something that I really enjoy doing is like, if I know that I have a phone call, that's going to be like 30 minutes or something like that. And I know that I don't have to be in front of my laptop to have that phone call. I love to go on a walk while I'm having that phone call, just in the neighborhood, you know, literally just in the neighborhood, because it just, it's keeping my steps up. You know, you should be getting at least 10,000 steps a day. So that's super important to just even that little fundamental of, again, the fundamentals, keeping those in check will allow you to have more freedom with other things in my that, opinion. That is, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up because that's kind of what I've been doing, you know, as, as coming from a competitor and I, I've got to say, like, it feels so good to just work out the way I want to work out um, when you're competing and you're, you know, competing and getting ready for the Olympia or you have an improvement season. Um, there's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of fun to have those goals, but it's also a lot of pressure because you feel like you have to, you know, I always had to put on, you know, mm -hmm. build this a little bit more or fill out here. And so it's a, you know, it's a struggle and it's a pressure. So I've been loving, absolutely loving. I've been going for distance running in the mornings. So like I've been running for like, you know, I might go for five miles or six miles and the next day I'll do weight training and then on yeah. the next day I'll run and then I will do upper body, you know, the following, yeah. but just changing things around. So it's fun. And, 
uh, enjoying other things besides maybe what I was doing so routinely every single day, um, it's, it's, it's been very challenging because my body's not used to it. And it's, it's just, it's fun. It's keeping fitness fun. exciting. Yeah, which it should be. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so great to break away from that routine. And even like little things, I've had a couple of clients ask me, hey, can I do the Peloton for my cardio? Of course. Yeah. You know, like that's a great workout. It's a great way. Even going to like an orange, well, okay, COVID, but you know what I mean? Like doing an orange theory class, you know, doing something that's just different out of your normal routine. I, I love that you said that because that's kind of the routine that I've been on in the sense of doing Peloton and then from there, um, doing, you know, weight training the following day and kind of just moving those around and doing what I feel like that day versus what I felt that I had to do. Cause yeah, it's been a long time, but I definitely remember how that feeling was when I felt obligated to go to the gym and I felt that I had to do something one way and it, it kind of put it, or it can, it can put a bad taste in your mouth for a little bit. And it's, almost like you're convincing yourself to do something that you once loved doing. So sometimes it's good to step away, take a nice break, you know, do a little something different, allow yourself to miss it <laughs> and then go back to it. And I think this is a really great segue into our next uh, topic that you had brought up that you wanted to talk about is um, maybe more of like a fitness, um, a, a fit physique that mm -hmm. the bikini division is kind of going towards. Yeah. You know, and uh, Janet Leu being our new champion, she has that very just athletic look. You know, she looks like she could be um, involved with any type of sport, not just hardcore bodybuilding. And it's right. very aesthetically pleasing. And I, I must say, like, um, part of me is a slight is a little bit sad that I'm leaving the sport now because I think it's a really exciting time for bikini competitors because it. It opens up a lot of doors having Janet as the champion. Now people can might have their their opinions about her physique, but she has a, just an overall very feminine physique, and it's very athletic, and it's uh, it can be it can go in many different directions for women. It's pleasing on and off the stage. You know, it looks great walking around. She looks great on stage. I think that, yeah, like you said, it, it kind it kind of opens more doors for certain competitors and of course closes doors for other competitors. I think it also really helps clarify for a lot of those girls that were like, oh, let me see what happens with wellness. Let me see what happens this year and then I'll make my decision. I think it really solidified and easily pushed those females into, okay, yeah, I need to bump up to wellness or okay, uh, no, I can still, I can still do this bikini look because yeah, that is now the standard for bikini. And Janet is of, I want to, she's muscular, but a smaller frame um, than some of those other girls. And yeah, I think that they're, uh, they're just trying to make a very clear conscious line between those two because you know the more divisions you add the more confusing it can get to for some people yeah it can it, it can but i think it was um going back to our you know what when we did a review of olympia i think it was a really good uh decision that the league made to set up the guideline and we all kind of knew it was going to happen like it had to happen especially with wellness being out but um for coming from a, a competitor um, you know, it allows you to, to do different things, um, to not feel like that constant pressure. Like I have to grow, I have to grow, I have to grow. Like that pressure over time gets really exhausting. You know, you mm -hmm. go through this phase, the lifestyle or your, your, you know, your seasons look like bulk. For me, it was like bulk, gain weight, put, try to put on as much size as you can. Now let's cut down. And it's that cycle gets really exhausting. Whereas now it's like people who are pretty close to that, that level, you can just live in a comfortable area and not have to go through these drastic pendulum swings, which is, uh, which is, which is, I think is, is very good and, and healthy. Um, and in those who want to continue to pack on muscle, beyond the bikini, then you have the other divisions to go into, but it's kind of capped the bikini to a division that is, you know, a little bit more achievable for the masses. 
Yeah, almost kind of back to, like we had said in the Olympia recap, like that 2016 look, um, if you will, that Courtney King was crowned with as well. Um, and, you know, I think that it kind of, I think it's more clear as time has passed and kind of going back, I think that a lot of times I personally like to take a step back from things and then look at things again, <clears throat> you know, at, on a different day, perhaps, if you will, just so that I can have a different um, understanding, a different perspective on that. And I think now looking back even more so at that first call out and at the Olympia and what occurred, uh, I think it just makes more sense as to why Issa didn't do as well as we had anticipated, even with her incredible posing and stage presence and of course her absolutely stunning face and body. Um, I think that she just came in much fuller than she did in 2019 and, and years prior and more fuller than she did at the Arnold. And um, I think that obviously played against her. So I'm very interested and curious to see as to when she gets back on stage, I would imagine that we will see her on stage here before the Olympia so that she can re get her feet wet. And, you know, who knows, sometimes competitors do a lot better when they do more shows. You know, we had this conversation with Ashley Kaltwasser even um, versus just doing the one show. So maybe getting Issa back into, you know, a more, a more regular seasoned uh, competition schedule, if you will, getting on stage a few more times than just the Arnold and Olympia um, would be beneficial for her and not putting on as much muscle. Cause it seems that she has that young body that wants to grow. Yeah. I think they know her formula and they know exactly what to do to get her to that winning physique. I feel like they were just, almost like purposely trying to push the envelope, push the un envelope, like, okay, let's see if we can get away with this and make it even more uh, unreachable for everybody else. And it's kind of like, eh, it just kind of crossed the line a little bit too much. Yeah, it's almost like going back to that good old, trying to be 5% better, end up 10% worse. You know, it's just darn. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well said. Well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> um, that's a, that's a, I think that was a, a good uh, a good discussion for uh, for us. The, for us, yes. <laughs> um, no, I think it's a good discussion for just the time of the world right now and what we're in and. And, you know, I think that was something that I did get quite a bit of. I was, so, it was so awesome meeting uh, quite a few of the girls that do watch this show um, during the Olympia week, coming to get their hair and makeup done by Maximum Beauty, and then talking to me about how they really appreciated our, our podcast, our show uh, during quarantine, because it helped keep them entertained, kind of keep them motivated, because it is, it's like that limbo time right now, where it's like, nothing's really going on with bodybuilding, especially because we don't have any Arnold hype right now. So it's, it's weird. It's weird. It is, right? I can't believe that I'm not going to be going to a show until April. Like super weird. It's a long, it's a, it's, it's a long time, but the great thing is that it is continuing. Um, and our, 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 uh, you know, our advice after discussing all of this on the show is that, you know, right now is the time to, you know, whether, no matter what your goal is, if you're taking a long period of time off, if you're taking a short period of time off, if you're getting ready to start prep soon, um, you know, now is the time that you start to make those changes, whether it's, you know, weight loss, muscle growth, starting to cut, you know, now is the time that you're starting to get your mind in the game, maybe practice on your pose, practice your posing, um, you know, yeah. dive in with your coach about what the game plan is going to be, but this yeah. is form those new habits, you know, d take the time to learn something new and pay attention to your body, you know, learn, learn what works, learn what doesn't work. You know, you, you do. And Camille, I think obviously it, it's basically what you were just saying in uh, our conversation is the fact that you make those adjustments and you grow and you do all those things during the downtime, during your off season. So don't wait around until you're 16 weeks out from a show. And then it's, you know, 
oh, I didn't make as many changes as I wanted to, that, you know, in between shows. Well, yeah, of course, you, you messed around for the other <laughs> 16 weeks that you had off, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I think this is a great time for, you know, if, if you're watching this show and you have never competed and maybe you're wanting to get into competing, um, I think it's also a great time to start something like a prep for a show because it, the best thing that, it, you know, you get out of the whole sport is you get discipline, you get structure, you, get, you have a goal, and a lot of people need that right now, and this can help really kind of guide you through um, maybe a time in your life where you might need that. Um, that's what made me fall in love with the sport was that it provided me with that constant structure and a goal for myself, and um, it's a perfect time to enter the sport and get involved with it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And two, you can see a full list of rules and regulations and, you know, get more detail on things on npcnewsonline.com. They do a great job of breaking that down, putting pictures, um, demonstrating poses, even uh, different resources you can find there. So for anyone new getting involved and two, of course, I, I recommend watching all of our old episodes. <laughs> You know, we give we give you guys quite a bit of information. It's funny to say that too. I have to say we literally totally just phew, right over our heads, Camille. The fact that we were talking about last year that we were doing your seminar. It's our like year anniversary, dude. Oh my god. Yeah. I like, didn't even what? That. That's crazy. I oh, didn't oh, even oh, think oh. about it. That was one year old. That's so cute. Literally, so cute. Um, I was gonna say also, not to not to change the subject. That was really. Oh, good. sorry. Just Thanks. stealing my moment. I'll um, just be emotional over here. <laughs> I was gonna say, if anybody has any questions, it'd be really cool to do like a uh, not maybe not necessarily a live Q and A, but a uh, okay. Q and A segment at the end of episode. So I know a lot of people. Um, we'll send out, you know, maybe questions or maybe have a certain topic they would like us to cover or whatever the question is, it can be anything, you know, related to health and fitness. Um, send us a, Sarah's contact is readily available. So is mine. Send us a, a DM email and we can address anyone's questions and go, go from there. Yeah. Yeah. We would love that. So whatever we could help you guys out with, give you advice on, answer questions. We're we in. Do. We should also do maybe a makeup tutorial. Oh, we could do that. With them beauty. That'd be fun. I yeah, we could that. definitely do that. We can definitely do that. Like I would love that. It'd be like how to do smoky eyes or how to do eyeliner or contouring. We you yeah. guys can do some tutorials. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're, uh, I'm uh, cooking up. I have one of my, one of my uh, lead artists out here is in, out here in Knoxville, Tennessee too. So I will be linking up with her uh, as well. So we can definitely brainstorm how we can do that. Maybe what we can do is like you and the professional can be like doing it there and I can be doing it on my screen and I can be, I'll be like the viewer, like following your instructions and we'll see how well I can do from following your lead. Let's do that. No, like <laughs> totally. Let's do that. That would be great. That would be very entertaining. I think that uh, you guys would all be very entertained by that. And you'll learn quite a bit. So we could yeah. do that. Yay. Right. Well, that's a perfect way to say that this show was brought to you by Maximum Beauty. <laughs> all your competition glam needs. And you guys can now find us on our new URL. That's going to be beauty at its maximum.com. Uh, you can book directly on the website now, um, and then you guys will get an email just with confirmation, asking some final up questions, but super simple. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions or any shows that you might see that are not on the Maximum Beauty schedule, let me know, and we can see what we can do to be out there. So we're really excited for the 2021 season to kick off. The team will also be at the clash with me in Orlando in April. So any of y'all going, we would love to glam you. And they're, so, yeah. they're great at what they do. I mean, look at Sarah's, look at Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love what we do. <laughs> 
So yes, but yeah, this uh, this was fun. I'm glad that we got to do this, and we will now be uh, we will actually be back on a normal schedule since uh, life has uh, we got through the holidays, and I got through my move. So here we are. We're getting our bearings back. We're a little That's rusty right. at this, but we'll be getting our bearings back. So That's right. drop a comment below. Let us know what you think. Send us any questions that you might have so we can incorporate into our next episode. And <laughs> well, until next time, you guys, I am Sarah Lyon with Marriott for the Bikini Show. Is this now season three? Is that what we're doing? Oh, and there's Chris, of course. And there's Chris. We're, we're missing you Oreo. <laughs> your, your makeup is beautiful, by the way. Oh, Isn't it thank nice? you. It's gorgeous. I thought um, it was cool yes. glam. This is I just wanted to give Wurzel the Herzl. Was easy, man, easy. <laughs> ah! Everyone's like, who are they talking about? Uh, insert Carl child. is the little elf that cleans yeah. all this up. Uh, but if <laughs> no. season three, then that means season two was like... Um, <laughs> I know, right? Season two is like six episodes. episodes so at the most <laughs> awkward <laughs> sorry guys this is season 2.2.5 2. 2. 1 2.1 2.1 i like it <laughs> i like it i think it's going to be labeled that we'll, we'll just call this season i think we should call this season two. season 2 cuz it's, it's this is our second year together Okay. Or it's actually your third season. Huh? I don't know. Because you guys were you guys were talking together before last year was a month ago, right? No, our we did our first show um, last year or this weekend. At the bar. Yeah. At the bar. Oh my god, can we Kyle, I need you to insert our uh first there was a, that was So Sarah, do you want to start it? Yeah, one second. Okay. <laughs> My bad. I just need a little bit more. <laughs> this is rough. That if we're ever recording and I look like shit, you're gonna tell me that. Did you get that on record? Yes. <laughs> we did a lot of rants. We should actually bring some of those in there. I think we went when we went off on vegan diets at one point. Uh, we did. We did. Oh my god, that's so funny you said that. Wait, what date? I literally need to confirm what date we launched. Okay, dun dun dun. Five days ago was our anniversary, January 20th of 2020. Wow. Was it? Oh, it was. It was here. It was that okay. hotel, huh? It was at, oh, that's awkward. That was, yeah, we were hung over. Hung so over. hung over. It, it, and uh, we did a Arnold's. We did Arnold's intro. There it is. That shit. Let me just get some more that's, coffee. That's pouring, that's pouring whiskey or Kahlua into your coffee. No. <laughs> uh, the hair of the dog was probably a smarter idea than what we did that morning. We probably should have. <laughs> You know what made me realize that it was one year actually was um, the McGregor fight that this, this weekend. Oh my God, <laughs> no joke though. I was like, wait a minute, please last longer than seven seconds. Please last longer than seven seconds. Remember that? And we he got his ass whooped. I know, we worked so hard last year to get into that bar. Literally. <laughs> I think we, we paid some extra dough to get into that bar. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. Memory lane. Yeah. Over. Okay. All right. Sarah, hey, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, this was fun. Season 2.1. It's endless. Yeah. Endless.